All right. So today we are going to discuss PBS paper, obviously of class uh, CBSC, class 10 CBSC. And this paper was held, I think, two days back or something, right? So we'll be discussing the school paper. Now, obviously, you can see the instructions on the screen. So question paper consists of four sections. Section A consists of eight questions of one mark. All right, internal choice is obviously there. Section B consists of four questions of two marks. Then section C consists of four questions of three marks. And then section D consists of three questions of four marks. Right? Okay, so without further ado, let's begin with the very first question, which is if P and Q are distinct prime numbers, then their HCF is. Now, P and Q are distinct prime numbers. So if I write the prime factorization of P, I will just have P. If I write the prime factorization of Q, I will just have Q. So this is the prime factorization. Now, HCF is the highest common factor. Now, obviously, no common factor, no common factor. That means HCF has to be 1. Option A is the correct one. All right, moving on to question number 2 now. He says the value of cos 45 degree is, obviously, that is 1 by root 2. I'm sure you know the values of the standard angle. So I will not be discussing that. Moving on. The third question, he says root 2 plus 3 root 7 plus 3 is what kind of a number? Obviously, a rational number, a different sort of a rational number has been added. So, obviously, the addition has to be a irrational number. If you want to prove it, you can use the method of contradiction, but this is an objective type and I can clearly see it is an irrational number. Moving on. Now, he says from 0 degree to 90 degree, the maximum value of sine theta is. Now, sine theta goes from 0 to 1 by 2, to 1 by 2, to root 3 by 2, to 1. So, obviously, the maximum value here is 1. So, B is the correct, correct option. Moving on. He says, find the LCM of this and this. Now, in the LCM, obviously, I would have the A, right? The prime number A. Now, I need to decide about the exponent. Now, in the multiple, A is per 5 should be there, but... A raised by 7 should definitely be there, right? So, A raised by 7 in the lowest common multiple. And here B square is there, B cube is there. In the lowest common multiple, B cube would be there. Hence, this is my LCM. All right, moving on to the next one. Find the greatest possible speed at which a man can walk 52 kilometer and 91 kilometer in an exact number of minutes. Right? Okay. In exact number of minutes. Greatest possible speed. So, what can happen if I talk about the man who is walking 52 kilometer per hour? No, 52 kilometer he is walking. Right? So, it might happen that in one minute, he covers one kilometer. A bit difficult, but it's just a hypothetical scenario. Right? Okay. In two minutes, in one minute, he can cover two kilometer. Then because I can measure 52 kilometer exactly. Then 3 I cannot because 52 is not divisible by 3. All right. 4 I cannot. Okay. Then uh, 5 I cannot. 6 I cannot. 6, 7 I cannot. And then I will be left with. Uh, all right. Then I think it would be 13. Next would be 13. 13. Actually 4 I actually I can. It is divisible by 4. Right. Okay. 4 I can. Then 13. And then I can have 26, then I can have 52. Can you see what I have listed out here? I have listed out the factors. Similarly, for 91, I can list out the factors. Now, he says the greatest possible speed, right? The greatest possible speed, because here I have written 1 kilometer per minute, 2, 2 to here only, so the obviously, 7 kilometer per minute, then 13 kilometer per minute. So I am basically writing the speed. Now he is talking about the greatest possible speed. That means I want a number which is present over here, present over here, and the greatest of it. So that means among the common factors, I'm looking for the highest one. So that is why I will try to find out the HCF of 52 and 91, which is actually clearly visible from here. It turns out to be 30. Right? So the greatest possible speed at, a, at which a man can walk is actually 13 kilometer per minute. Right, next. Now, he says, sin theta is given to you, cos theta is given to you, then evaluate cot theta. Now, obviously, cot theta is related with cos and sin directly. It is cos theta by sin theta. Substitute the value of cos theta, B, and sin theta, A. So, answer is B by A. Alright, moving on. 
Now he says in the given figure. Now obviously this is the internal choice question as you can see or is there. So careful. Now in the given figure find the length of AB. Now this is a right triangle. Right. I need to find the length of this. This angle is given to me and this side is also given to me. Right. So which trigonometric ratio should I use? I will use cos of 30 degree. Because cos 30 is based upon hypotenuse. Now if 30 is here that means base is here adjacent side. That is AB. By hypotenuse is easy. That is AC. Cos 30, the value I know. It is root 3 by 2. Is equal to AB. I need to find out. Divided by AC. Right. So AB turns out to be 3 root 3. Which is the correct answer. Alright. Moving on. Now, he is talking about the given figure. Angle PQR. Obviously, this is 90 degree. And find the value of sine P plus cos P. So, let me talk about sine P. Sine is perpendicular over hypotenuse right okay let me remember this now p is here perpendicular is the opposite one so that means 5 so 5 divided by hypotenuse is obviously 30 now let's talk about cos p cos is nothing but base upon hypotenuse now p is here that means b is the adjacent one so that means 12 by 30 i need to add them up so just add them up and you will get the answer as 17 by 30 all right moving on now, he says, first of all, uh, correction should be here. This should be 6 raised by n. He says, check whether 6 raised by n can end with a digit 0 for any natural number n or not. 6 raised by n ending with digit 0. Now, digit 0 is actually related with factor of 10. Right? Factor of 10, that means it is related with pair of 2 and 5. 2 and 5 both has to be present in the prime factorization of the number. So my number is 6 raised by n. So that is nothing but 6 into 6 into 6, so on into 6. Obviously, this is n time. But I want the prime factorization. So I have 2 into 3 raised per n. Or I can say 2 raised per n into 3 raised per n. This is nothing but 2 into 2 into 2, so on. This is n times. This is obviously n times again. Right? But 2 and 5 both has to be present. Now, 2 is definitely present in the prime factorization. I agree. But is 5 present? Answer is no. So, no, 5 is not present. So, no, 2 into 5 is there. So, no, 10 is there. So, no, 0 is there. So, we have checked that any, the number 6 raised by n can never end with digit 0. Right? Okay. Now, I'll uh, attempt the uh, odd part. So, let me just everything. Yeah. Okay. Back to it. Now, HC is given to you, which is 3. Uh, LCM is given to you, which is 36. You need to find the value of Q. Now I know that HCF and LC. In fact, HCF into LCM is actually related with product of the two numbers. First number into second number. Now HCF is 3 into LCM is 36 is equal to. First number is given to you 9 into Q. Just evaluate it and you will get Q as 12. Moving on. Let's move on to question number 10 now. Find the value of this. Oh, okay. So 1 plus. Now, this is nothing but sin 30 whole square. So, sin 30 is nothing but 1 by 2 whole square. Divide by 1 minus sin, sin square 30, sin 30 whole square. So, 1 by 2 whole square. So, obviously, this is 1 plus 1 by 4. Divide by 1 minus 1 by 4. So, this is 5 by 4. Divide by 3 by 4. So, answer is 5 by 3. Alright, moving on. Now, he says explain why this is a composite number. Now, composite number is that number which have a factor other than 1 and the number itself. So, uh, so we want a new kind of a factor. 1 and the, uh, uh, the number itself other than that. Right. So, let me just look at the number. Now, you can see that this plus this is there. Right. So, let me try to think if I can take something common out. So, 21 can be written as 7 into 3. So, 7 is present over here. 7 is present over here. So, do you think I can take 7 common out? The answer is yes. So, I can write the number as 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 2 plus 3. Now, you have written the number as product of two numbers. Now, that means 7 is a factor. 7 is not 1 and 7 is definitely not the number itself. That means 7 is a factor other than 1, other than 1 and number itself. That means, that means the number is composite. Alright, moving on. Question number 12 now. He says cos A is root 3 by 2. Now, cos of which angle is equal to root 3 by 2? 
answer is obviously 30 degree right now he says sin b is 1 so sin of which angle is equal to 1 is 90 degree so b is 90 degree he wants to find the value of b minus c so 90 minus 30 that is 60 degree the answer all right moving on now he says if this is equal to this you need to find the value of k now these are standard angles i can write the value now this is nothing but for 45 whole square that means 1 square minus sin 60 whole square so root 3 by 2 whole square is equal to a sin 45 1 by root 2 into cos 45 1 by root 2. so this is 1 minus 3 by 4 is equal to a by 2 so this becomes 1 by 4 so actually a becomes 1 by 2 which is the answer all right moving on now he says evaluate the following one you just substitute the value you know this so 2 into now this is sin 30 whole square so sin 30 is 1 by 2 whole square plus 3 into now we say cosecant 60 whole square first of all cosecant 60 i do not know cosecant 60 i don't remember the value sin 60 and that is root 3 by 2 so cosecant 60 is 2 by root 3 so 2 by root 3 whole square minus 2 cot 45 whole square so that is 1 square divide by cos 60 whole square so that is 1 by 2 whole square plus sin 45 whole square 1 by 2 whole square right so this is done so this is 2 into obviously this is 1 by 4 plus this is 3 into 2 4 by 3 minus right okay so this and this gets cancelled this is so this okay denominator also we need to write it denominator 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 okay so this becomes 1 by 2 plus 4 minus 2 divide by 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 that is 3 by 4 so this becomes this is 2 so 1 by 2 plus 2 that is 5 by 2 whole divide by 3 by 4 so into 4 by 3 so answer should be 10 by 3 all right on the board now we will move on to the second next part all right prove root 2 is an irrational number okay so we have done this question so many times suppose that root 2 is rational that means i can write root 2 as a by b where a and b are positive integers and b is not equal to 0 and it's here for a comma b is 1 all right first of all we'll square it up and then cross multiply so 2b square is equal to a square that means 2 has to divide a square divides a square we have done this proof a lot of times so that's why i'm rushing through it because i'm sure you know this and if 2 divides a square 2 has to divide a that's the theorem in your ncrd books now if this is the case that means i can write a as 2 into some integer let that be k cool now substitute the value of a over here so my now equation becomes 2b square is equal to instead of a square i'll say 2k whole square right next step b square is equal to 2k square now again 2 will divide b square 2 divides b square that means 2 divides b now okay here we are 2 divides a 2 divides b that means 2 divides both a and b now if they divide 2 divides both of them that means 2 is a common factor but you said that hcf is 1 but you found a common factor that means now you have a contradiction why did this contradiction arise because your supposition was wrong therefore root 2 is irrational all right moving on to the next one now he says tan b is this you need to evaluate this quantity right now tan of some angle is given to me that means i need to talk about the right triangle so let me have my right triangle this is 90 obviously suppose this is a this is b this is a. now he says tan b that means perpendicular over high uh, perpendicular over base that is 4 by 3 so i'll consider my triangle where ac is 4 and my bc is 3 my perpendicular is 4 and base is 3. Hypotenuse obviously becomes 5. Pythagorean triplet. Now he says sin square b. That means sin b whole square. So sin b. B is here. Perpendicular would be 4. Hypotenuse is obviously 5. 4 by 5 whole square minus cos b. B is here adjacent side. So this is 3 by 5 whole square. 16 by 25 minus 9 by 25. The answer is 7 by 25. Alright. Moving on. Now he says find the LCM of this, this, and this. Alright. 
uh, by prime factorization method. So I can write 140 as square into 5 into 7. Then I can write 315 as 3 square into 5 into 7. Then 350 I can write as 2 into 5 square into 7. So LCM. Let's talk about LCM. Obviously 2 would be there but which part? 2 raised to power 2, 2 raised to power 1. Obviously 2 raised to power 2 would be there. 3 square would be there obviously. Then 5 would be there but here 1, 1, 2. Okay, 2. Then obviously 7 would be there. This is my LCM and this turns out to be 6. Okay. Hopefully. Alright, moving on. Now he says the length, breadth and height of a room are this. Find the longest tape which can measure the three dimensions of the room. Exactly. So I want the tape which can measure 825, which can measure 675, which can measure 450. So if I want to measure to, uh, 825, I can ha maybe have a 1 centimeter tape. Right. I can use my 1 centimeter tape 825 times in order to exactly measure the damage. Right. Then, um, then I can have 3 centimeter. I can exactly measure it because 825 is divisible by 3. And then 5 and then so on. I think it's very clear that I'm writing out the factors. Similarly, I can write the factors of 675, 450. Now, I need the tape which can measure these three dimensions exactly. So, the number should be here, should be here, should be here. I'm looking for the common factor. Now, he says the longest tape, that means it has to be the bigger one. That means I'm looking for the HCF. Now, HCF of 825, 6. 675 and 450 you can easily find out using prime factorization it turns out to be equal to 75. Now moving on he says also find how many times this tape will be used to measure the breadth. My breadth is 675 right. 675 centimeter I need to measure with the help of 75 centimeter. So first 75 then 75 more and so on. Basically I need to have 75 into 9. 9 times I will use the tape so that I can cover the exact length of 675. So 9 times is the answer. And the longest tape is 75 centimeters. Alright, moving on. Or question obviously. Now he says find the largest number which divides 98. Leaving a remainder 7. 123 leaving a remainder 11. 258 leaving a remainder 13. Now, I want the largest number. So, let me talk about a number first. So, any number which divides 98. So, dividend is 98. It should leave a remainder 7. Right. And then the same number. Uh, so, let me call that number A. Uh, if I divide 123 by A, the remainder is 11. Then, if I divide 258 by A, the remainder is 30. Right. I want this number to be largest. Now, it's easier if I can make the remainder 0. Right, because then I can talk about the factors, right? Because if the remainder turns out to be zero, I'm talking about the factors, right? Okay, so what should I do? Now, if I want the remainder to be zero, right? Seven is there, minus seven would have been there. If it was 91 instead of 98, if it was 91, A, uh, 91 would have been exactly divisible by A, right? Because I'm subtracting seven. So, okay, so I found a number which is exactly divisible by A. So 91 is there. Now, if I subtract 11 from here, right, that means I'm talking about 112. A would definitely divide 112. Okay. Then similarly, I can have 245. A would definitely divide 245. Right. So I'm looking for a number which divides 91, 112, 245. That means I'm looking for the common factor. I want the largest number. That means I'm looking for the highest common factor. You can easily find it out and it actually turns out to be 7. All right, moving on. Now he says, uh, if right triangle, triangle ABC is right angle at B, so let me make it A, B, C, 90 degrees here. Cos A is 3 by 5, so cos A. So that means uh, A is here, base would be A. So AB by AC is given. So I have to think about my triangle, right? I can have any kind of a triangle. So this ratio, this by this has to be 3 by 5. So, I will consider this to be 3. I will consider this to be 5. Automatically, this becomes 4. Right? Now, he says, find the trigonometric ratio secant A. Now, cos A is given to you. Secant A, you can definitely write it. That is nothing but 5 by 3. Reciprocal of cos A. Okay. Then, sin C. Sin C. Yes. Now, C is here. Sin is perpendicular over hypotenuse. Perpendicular is this one. So, 3 by 5. Cot A. Instead of cot A, I need to write tan A. So, A is here, right? 
right? Perpendicular would be this, and base is obviously this, so 4 by 3. But I want quad, so that means 3 by 4. These are the answers. Moving on. Now he says, read the text carefully and answer the following questions. The circus arts program is one of the most popular activities at Camp Chloe Khan. It brings a level of excitement and enthusiasm to the camp experience that can't be, that cannot be found at home or in school. Okay. A circus artist is climbing a 17 meter rope, tightly stretched and tied from the top of a vertical pole. So obviously this seems to be the pole and this seems to be the wire. Okay. On the basis of the information, answer the following questions. Okay. So let me see what the questions are. First is distance between point A and point B. So A is here. Oh, okay. Wait. A is here. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah. A is here. B is here. I want the distance between the two. Obviously, Pythagorean triplet, you can see 8 is here, 17 is there. That means this is nothing but 50. That, so, option, let's say, option D would be the correct one. Then he says value of cos C. Okay. Cos C actually turns out to be equal to cos C. C is here. Base would be this. So, 8 by 17. That, 8 by 17. That means option C is the correct one. Right. Now he says 8 by 15 is value of 8 by 15. 8 is here. Okay. Okay, 8 is here, 15 is here. Now he says 8 by 15. Right? If I consider A, this is perpendicular, this is base. So 8 by 15 is actually nothing but tan. So let's see whether tan is the picture or not. Okay, yes, option B is the correct one. Now he says value of cos a minus sin c. Okay, that we can easily do cos a minus sin. Okay, so I'll write it here. Cos a. Okay, cos a. Now a is here. Cos that means base would be 15, so 15 by 17. And I wanted sin c. So sin c. c is here, perpendicular is here, so 15 by 17. He said cos a minus sin c, right? Let me just check it out. Cos a minus sin c. The answer is 0. See, it will cancel. So answer is 0. Alright, so option A is the correct one. Okay, right. So with this, I think our question is done. Do we have any question? Cool. Right. So with this, our uh, paper discussion is over. Please check your answers and do let me know what marks are you scoring in the test. Thank you and I will see you next time.